Keeping them honest every night. AC 360. CNN. Weeknights 10 Eastern. There's a report that the phone hacking scandal that has already ruined careers, caused a popular British tabloid to fold, led to 10 arrests, and put Rupert Murdoch's media empire under intense scrutiny, may be on the brink of claiming its biggest victim yet. I'm talking about the News Corp CEO, Rupert Murdoch himself. The man who is in charge of a global network that owns a dizzying array of TV channels, movie studios, book publishers, and newspapers. A report from Bloomberg News tonight says News Corp is considering replacing Murdoch. Now, sources tell Bloomberg that it's not a done deal, but it could happen, depending on what happens when Murdoch appears before the British Parliament tomorrow. That's when Murdoch will answer questions about the company's role in hacking the phones of murder victims, royal family members, and celebrities. Hacking done by employees of the British tabloid News of the World. If Murdoch is replaced, it will be an absolute bombshell in a scandal that already grows more shocking by the day. The latest sad and stunning twist of former News of the World reporter, a whistleblower, found dead in his home. Sean Hoare was one of the first to go on the record, telling the New York Times News of the World reporters were encouraged to hack into voicemail accounts. Now, British police reportedly say his death is being treated as unexplained, but not thought to be suspicious, suggesting it was a suicide. This scandal is rocking Britain, but seems ready to explode here in the United States as well. The FBI investigating whether News Corp journalists tried to hack into the phones of 9-11 terror victims and survivors. There are calls in Congress for an investigation as well. The FBI also says it's aware of reports that actor Jude Law's phone was hacked while he was in New York. The scandal shows no sign of slowing down, quite the contrary, given rumblings of Murdoch himself possibly, possibly being replaced as the CEO of his own media empire. A man whose customer base is the whole world, anyone who watches Glee or American Idol on Fox, anyone who reads the Wall Street Journal or the New York Post, anyone who goes to the movies or reads books. Joining me now live here, CNN senior legal analyst Jeffrey Tubin, also the New York Times media reporter Brian Stelter, and in London, our senior international correspondent Matthew Chance. Uh, Brian, let's start with you. Rupert Murdoch stepping down in the world of media, that's a wow. True or a maybe? Right now, it's a maybe. Uh, News Corp will not deny the Bloomberg report on the record. We've been asking all night. What they will say on background, people around the company will say, there was no meeting today to talk about it. As you can tell, that's not a real denial. Right. So they may want this out here ahead of the testimony in order to change the tone of the testimony tomorrow. Clearly, it's going to be a, a tough day for Rupert Murdoch and his son James testifying. Uh, but the reality is Rupert Murdoch is a, a pretty elderly man. Whether he leaves this year or next year or five years, there's already been talk about succession, plan, uh, succession plans for him. And the report from Bloomberg is that Chase Carey, who's right now the COO, could step up to be CEO. That's not out of the question. Analysts have been thinking for days it might happen. All right, so Matthew, Rupert Murdoch and his son and Rebecca Brooks testify in front of Parliament tomorrow. Obviously, Brian just laid out here this leak could be in expectations in advance of that. What are we expecting from this hearing? Well, obviously, we're expecting that Rupert Murdoch in particular is going to be the big box office draw. He's going to be grilled by British members of Parliament, cross-examined about the extent of his knowledge about what his executives at News International and News Corp were up to when they apparently, as the accusation goes, authorised uh, these phone hacking you know, antics to go ahead against you know, celebrities and, and, and victims of crimes. To what extent he knew, to what extent he's going to do something about it. So it's going to be a pretty expensive explosive day and obviously just the very fact that the world's most powerful media mogul is appearing in front of the British Houses of Parliament to answer questions in this way is just a you know a fascinating you know event in itself and so we're talking about this as a business story Rupert Murdoch could be stepping down as a CEO of his own empire as a political drama because he's so influential in British politics right. and in American politics but Councillor Tubin uh, to you on this point he's testifying in a political setting but he knows there are criminal investigations on both sides of the Atlantic. Rupert Murdoch and his deputies need to be careful, don't they? Think about how difficult it is for them, because they've got to do two almost entirely contradictory things in their testimony tomorrow. One is they've got to acknowledge responsibility. They have to say that what is completely obvious is that this was not some aberration. This was how the news of the world worked. It was not one person. It was not ten people. It was apparently thousands of people who were hacked. And the idea that they didn't know is preposterous. But at the same time, they can't go in there and confess to crimes. Practically everyone around them has been arrested already. Rebecca Brooks, Rupert Murdoch's protege in Great Britain, arrested yesterday. I mean, so they have to acknowledge but not admit. Frankly, I don't know if it's possible. You don't know if it's possible. You know, Matthew, 
we get this sad story today, a bizarre twist of this story. The whistleblower, Sean Hoare, found dead in his home. What do we know about the circumstances of that death in the investigation? Not, not a great deal, but it has added this bizarre additional human dimension to this, you know, saga which continues to develop almost, you know, by the, ha by the hour in the, here in the United Kingdom. Uh, the police have issued a very kind of terse statement uh, saying that, that this man was found at 10.40 in the morning, local time. Uh, he's now been identified as Sean Hoare, of course, the, the former showbiz a correspondent for the news of the world and so a man who would have been very well placed indeed to know about the antics of fellow news of the world uh, journalists and of course he, he he was this whistleblower he was the first person to publicly go out there and say look Andy Coulson, the former editor of the News of the World, the former press secretary of the British Prime Minister, uh, David Cameron, not only knew that phone hacking took place when he was editor of the paper, but he also condoned it and actively encouraged it. And so this is someone who has been a great source, a sort of uh, you know, font of accusations, fountain of accusations throughout this scandal, John. And so as the questions shift to the Parliament hearings, Brian, uh, in the sense that Rupert Murdoch himself could be at risk here, could be planning to step down, could, be under, could come under investigation at some point. As this happens, you look at the individual, but you say as you look at the individual, look at the power of the individual That's because right. of these conglomerates. That's right. I think this is the best opportunity that critics of Rupert Murdoch have ever had to speak out against him and to say he just has too much power. We're hearing a lot of that out of Britain already. We're hearing lawmakers say maybe News Corp should be broken up, that maybe it shouldn't be allowed to own satellite broadcasting company as well as books and as well as newspapers. I think we're starting to hear that in the U.S., but it's, it's not nearly to the level that it was uh, already being heard in the U.K. You know, John, I was in, in Britain for the last 10 days, and the scope of Murdoch's power there is so enormous. You know, how much the Times of London, the Sun newspapers, News of the World, now defunct, Sky Broadcasting, I mean, he is courted by politicians there of all parties. Um, it, it really, sure, he has a lot of power here with the Wall Street Journal and Fox News, but it's nothing like in Britain, and there are a lot of people who are laying for him who are waiting to get back at him for exercising that power for so long. And, and, and Jeff, quickly, as we watch what plays out overseas, when you hear the FBI, the Congress here, so we're going to watch a parliamentary procedure in Britain tomorrow, but there's a lot of activity here in the sense, where do you see this going? You know, I, I think that's a long shot. You know, the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act is, mm -hmm. it was designed about bribery of government officials abroad. That's not seemingly what 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 went on here um, the the reports of hacking in the United States have been really sketchy highly unconfirmed I, this really seems like a criminal matter abroad so far but politically uh, Murdoch is in obviously desperate trouble and the main event in the next 24 hours these parliamentary hearings Jeff Tubin Brian Stelter Matthew Chance thanks